Hi, I'm Mark Johnson. You're watching Core Finance. I'm joined today by Mark Ostwald. He's a strategist at ADM ISI, one of the city's biggest broking clearers. And we're going to be talking today about the heady subject of risk in the bond markets. And particularly, Mark, where's the risk going? What's happening? Well, we've um, <clears throat> obviously had a lot of demand for riskier assets throughout this year. And whenever there's a setback, I think a lot of the bears in the equity market have been always rubbing their hands and hoping this is going to be the big one, which never seems to happen, uh, primarily because bond market yields, particularly the government bond market yields, remain very, very low. But we've had a series of events this week um, which have cause people to basically start to doubt things again. All the things which were propelling us beforehand, namely hopes for the US tax reform plans, the fact that the ECB sounded very, very dovish at its most recent meeting, and the idea that the Bank of Japan will not be stepping away from the table of its QE program and printing money ad infinitum have all become, become to be questioned. First of all, we had this uh, realization that the Senate's uh, uh, tax reform plan didn't really look too much like the House tax reform plan, and they were talking about delaying the corporate tax cut for one year, and suddenly people were thinking, hold on a minute, maybe we shouldn't have been quite so full of elation. Then we um, had the summary of the, B, the October BOJ meet, policy meeting. Now, the summary is not always very detailed, but it did touch on a subject which is quite sensitive to financial markets, particularly given the fact that we've had a really steep rise of late in uh, the Nikkei. Um, and they suddenly were talking about the fact that they felt uncomfortable with this steep rise in the Nikkei and that perhaps they might need to consider um, their, the way that they're conducting their ETF purchases, which is their main way of buying stocks. And then last but not least, having had this dovish message from the ECB, we had uh, Benoit Curé, one of the senior spokesmen for the ECB, questioning, well, basically indicating that when the ECB does get to the end of its QE program, uh, which they haven't signaled an exact date for, it could be quite quick. And we had then Mr. Novotny this morning adding an insult to injury and saying, well, actually, there are a number of us, including Mr. Weitman and myself, who felt that we should have actually said this is going to be the end date for the QE program. So suddenly all this idea that we're going to have, um, you know, continued um, easy policy from at least the ECB and BOJ, even if not the Fed, uh, was thrown into question and the hopes for the US tax reform, not so good. And that's being reflected to some extent in some of these very tasty charts that we're just about yeah. to look at now. So let's kick off with the iShares high yield ETF price. Uh, we can see how that's just tailed off right at the end there. What's happening yes, here? I mean, I, I think the significant thing is obviously we've had some occasionally quite sharp fluctuations, particularly that one that we saw back in August. And that's for some people signaled, are we breaking down here? Is the appetite for high yield debt perhaps breaking down? But no, we actually stayed in the range that we'd established uh, from the start of April. Um, but now we're starting to break down more severely. And given the signals that we've had previously uh, from the high yield bond and its correlation with the performance of the S&P 500, there is a warning signal in there. One has to obviously take this somewhat proportionately. You know, in the greater scheme of things, we're still nowhere near down the levels that we were in November or December last year. I was so, going to say, if you go to the start of this, this yes. chart, that's quite a, a sort of volatile move up and then a, a range for most of the year, if you like, and now we're getting Fairly into... steady profile. I mean, it is just now that we seem to be breaking down. So it's going to be interesting. It's interesting, particularly in the context of the down move that we saw yesterday in the S&P 500. Um, and we can look at this in a slightly different way. Um, the next chart that we've got up here is the option adjusted spread for the US um, high yield bonds. Now, this is the entire market. This is the entire market, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, I will contrast it with something else in a moment. Again, here, the signs are, you know, obviously, it's, it tells much the same story, except we're talking about yield spread as opposed to ETF price. So yeah. they, op they move in opposite, opposite directions. Direction. Um, it's hardly dramatic. When one thinks about it, we've gone from a spread of 325 basis points to the low at the end of October, well, mid-October, and we're at 363 now. When one considers we were at 500 back in um, November, the wheels have hardly fallen off, 
but the trend is very clearly quite negative at the moment. Now let's take it in a little bit further and focus on sector. So here we have the energy, US high yield energy. The, the important sector. thing with this one is that last time that the, the high yield bond market led the equity market down, it was the energy sector responding to the collapse in the oil price that yeah. led it down. Sure, we all remember that. This time around, obviously oil prices are fairly strong. So actually, it turns out that in contrast to the last move down, we've got the high yield energy bond sector actually outperforming the rest of it, which is a, a remarkable turn of events. Though, of course, one has to stress that the spreads in the energy sector are obviously that much higher. So they have a much higher risk premium in themselves. We're still way off the levels that we were back in January, February. OK, so that's focusing on energy. Let's put across the continent, back yes. the, across the Atlantic to Europe. This is the European uh, high yield chart. So what's I, happening I, th I think there's, there's two aspects to this. I've pointed out on previous shows the fact that you can actually, the, on the average yield in the euro area um, of the high yield market, you can actually pick up yield going into the US two-year treasury. But for the time being, um, the euro, um, euro denominated high yield average, average spread is still miles lower, 195 basis points. And as much as there's been a small correction, we've gone from 175 basis points to 195. Obviously, if we were in to see a stage where the, um, <coughs> uh, the dollar were to perform a lot more strongly, there, there's got to be a few people who will be looking at those very tight spreads that we got on euro high yield and the fact that you can pick up yield going into the most conservative part of the market, i.e. US Treasuries, and thinking, do I really want to hang on, for this, hang on to this? So it sort of makes the whole idea that we're going to have a year-end, we're going to carry on with the rally, with a further year-end rally, it, it brings it into question. I'm not saying we're, we're, you know, we're about to have a massive sell-off, but there are some nasty signals out there at the moment. Right, OK. And when we talk about other asset classes, we look first, of course, to, to the equities sector, where people have been talking about a possible year-end rally there as well, and now perhaps not expecting a year-end rally. So there's a lot of doubt has crept into both markets almost in just the last few days. Oh, most certainly. And it's not really surprising. I say it's this constellation. The US one, obviously... The biggest hope that they were pinning on was the tax reform plan, which we've been basically having, hoping for all year long and still basically still looks a little bit of a, a reach away. Um, and that, if it isn't delivered of, or if it's postponed into next year, I think really will have a lot of people wondering, well, you know, this market's performed quite well this year. Maybe I should be just taking a little bit of money off the table, not getting bearish, but just taking some money off the table. Never a bad idea. Mark Oswald from ADMISI, thank you very much. That's it. See you next time.